Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Podcast Moguls. Did you know that I teach aspiring podcasters how to launch and grow their own hit podcast and grow their personal brand using podcasting? Yes, I sure do. And on Thursday, October 7th, I'm hosting my next free training on how to make podcasting your side hustle. Inside of this training, I'll go over the best way to stand out as a podcaster, so you'll learn the quickest way to stand out in podcasting. Plus, I'll teach you the number one thing you can do to grow those downloads. I'll teach you how to find your audience and gain your first 1,000 downloads and keep going from there. And finally, we'll talk about how to attract press and speaking opportunities, and that all leads to sponsorship, you guys. So if you truly want to make podcasting your side hustle, if you're not sure where to go, how to get started, make sure you're registered for this training. Go over to podcastmoguls.com. Again, that's podcastmoguls.com. I will have the link in the description and make sure you register for the next How to Make Podcasting Your Side Hustle training on Thursday, October 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you there. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro and I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews-Okome. So let's get started. Wow. Um, I don't know what to say. It's feeling like me season right now. I feel so bad for anybody who doesn't fuck with me. Um, mute me, block me, whatever you need to do, because it's it's a me season right now. It's my time. <laughs> Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome. Welcome back to the Side Hustle Pro Podcast. It's Nikayla here, your host. And I thought it was time for an update episode. I mean, I think it's been a minute. I really can't remember the last time I did an update episode. And in case you've been living under a rock, you don't know how I've been. I have been um, parenting. (laughs) I became a mom in April 2020. And life has never been the same. Now, I think becoming a mom in and of itself is hard anyway. But I think when you add in a global panorama, I think that makes things just a little, little bit harder. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know what's a little spicy. So I'm coming into Q4 of 2021, fourth quarter, and this is my mood. It's me season. Shout out to Issa Rae for stating what so perfectly encapsulates how I've been feeling. And that is I'm ready. I'm ready to refocus on the Side Hustle Pro Empire to implement a lot of the ideas and goals and dreams that I've been mapping out all year And the ideas never stop coming. It's the execution that has been a little bit difficult and tricky. And that's because I am a full-time mom. I'm taking care of Kingston for the hours of like 10 to 6 every single day. So the way Moya, my husband, and I have mastered the juggle. Did I just say master? Am I crazy? The way we have divided up the juggle is um, since he works with a West Coast company and he's on most of the day, like that noon to eight o'clock window, which is their nine to five, then he does the morning shift and I will take over around 10 a.m. So I try to wake up around six or seven, um, sometimes five if needed. Like y'all, I'm not a morning person. So I'm trying to push it back to that 4 a.m. that some of y'all do, but it's been really hard. <laughs> so I try to do the most in the mornings. I try to do my me time of journaling, um, devotional, getting my mind in a good headspace. I try to exercise during this time and plan for the day. I try to get some work done. So the deliverables that I need to get out to my team, to sponsors, to actually, you know, do things for my business, such as recording this episode. I try to do that in that window. And then once 10 o'clock comes, it's on and popping. It's mommy time. It's, it's, you know, I am the daycare for him right now because, because of the way the pandemic went down, we had moved to a new city. We had him, like I said, in April, we'd moved in to Maryland in February. And then by the time that everything hit with COVID, we were not thinking about even putting him into a daycare. So we weren't adding ourselves to any wait list because we just didn't know what the future looked like. By the time that testing, regular testing and accessible testing came out, in addition to vaccines and in addition to daycare centers and schools reopening, 
by the time we started looking into those places, the wait lists were so long. So he will be 18 months before he starts. And it has been us holding it down, you know, um, shifting um, him going from one hand to the other as we navigate this space of not only new parenthood, but juggling being two full-time workers in addition to full-time parenting. Because once he's up, like it, it, it never stops. So I want to pause to acknowledge two things. Number one, I acknowledge how blessed I am to be able to choose this, to have the flexibility to say, I am going to be a full-time mom and squeeze in work where I can. I've been able to stay home with him for almost 18 months, and that has been a joy and a blessing. It's also come with challenges, so... I'll get into that. And then number two, I recognize, and I always have to say this, but you know, I recognize how blessed and fortunate I am to have a husband, to have a partner, to partner with on parenting because it is so, so difficult and hard. So just want to get that out the way in terms of if anyone's like, oh, I can't believe she's complaining or she's privileged, blah, blah, blah. I don't think anyone really will, you know, like, because y'all are my crew, my fam, my, my friends. But just in case there's any crazy in the midst, I just want y'all to know that. Of course, I recognize that, but I'm just sharing my experience of what it's been like. Cool. So back to the regular scheduled program for this episode. The challenges have been um, when I don't get enough done in the morning time, which is very plausible because by the end of the day, it would seem like, oh, I have all this time. But by the end of the day, I am fried. <laughs> I am fried from the full-time job of parenting that is more than eight hours. It's more than the window of 10 to 6. It's, it's you know, and, and there are times when um, Moyo might have a late meeting and, you know, I, I've been taking care of him for, for much longer than that. And there's work that needs to be done in between that, right? There's household chores. We do have a cleaning service that comes in regularly, but it's still not really enough in terms of, you know, we're doing the laundry, we're doing the cooking we are doing all the things that come with domestic work together so it is exhausting it's exhausting um there's no lie there and with that comes this feeling that you have at the end of the day where you're just drained you're drained and then it's hard for me to work from that place so I give a lot of credit to moms who are able to work from that space because for me I find that I have to work from a space with some energy and some rest my best creative ideas are not going to come when I'm drained my ability to even speak to you, speak into a camera or interview a guest are not going to come when I'm drained. So as you can imagine, that has impacted how many episodes I have recorded. That has impacted um, a lot of things. And I have had to learn how to work around that. So of course, I've recorded interviews at the end of the day after a long day of taking care of King. Of course, I have gotten you know into my work after a long day of taking care of him. But it's still a feeling of exhaustion that I'm working through and Moyo is working through as well because, you know, after he spent a long day to almost eight, nine o'clock, their time, you know, then he has to do, the, you know, bedtime or he, you know, is getting into like the dishes and all the, the different things that we, we divvy up. So it's hard for both of us. It's not like one of us has it easier than the other. And I can say, oh, let me, <laughs> let me just give more to my husband. Um, Someone came in my Instagram DMs with that. And I was like, if you don't, get out of here because it's not a matter of that it's like we're both stretched so another thing that I explored was like the babysitter route and finding a nanny y'all why didn't anybody tell me how difficult it is to find a babysitter and a nanny now all of you who don't have kids yet, or maybe you do, maybe you have kids and you have a lot of help and or you, you know, had a, a referral for a nanny before you even gave birth. And so you've just had it smooth sailing. Please do not say to women like, oh, why don't you just get a nanny? Oh, wow. Are you getting help? Or, you know, you need to ask for help. That is such like a dismissal of the process that it takes to find someone you trust to take care of your kids. Because... I've been on the care.coms. I've been on the different websites. Um, I've had people flake on me. <laughs> I've had, you know, read people's descriptions that sounded mad sketchy or read the reviews that were, you know, mad sketchy. I don't even know how they're still on the platform. So that has been 
a job in and of itself. Hiring people, especially to take care of your kids, is a job in and of itself. And it has not been easy. Um, Luckily, I was able to tap into the small village that I have here and, um, you know, got a referral for a babysitter and she was amazing. But guess what? She's a teacher. So she went back to school um, when school opened this fall. And she was so amazing and popular that she was always busy. So she was not someone who could come Monday through Friday every day to watch the baby as we both worked. So finding that person just never materialized. And now he's about to start daycare. So I don't even know if it, it makes sense. Like I, I've still, I've still put the word out. I've still put um, the postings up on those sites, but it just hasn't materialized. So for those of you who are thinking about becoming moms, do know that the nanny and the babysitter search is tough. It will not just happen miraculously like this Mary Poppins figure is not just going to come into your life that you're going to trust with your kids. Not going to happen. Um, we don't have family that doesn't work um, close by <laughs> that can watch him either Monday through Friday. So, you know, it is something that I think uh, people who are expecting kids underestimate like you think it will just fall into place and for some people it does but for some people it does not and it it can be a challenge and it's something to to think through so if you're wondering like hey why don't you just get a nanny or babysitter that's been my experience there i'm looking at my notes so i can share everything with you i'm sharing all the tea i took notes for y'all okay um those are how my days go that's what i'm juggling i hope i gave you a full enough picture but what i'm trying to do more now over on the nikayla tv youtube is vlog a little bit so you get a peek into my day it is it's even hard to show it because <laughs> it's like how do i really show you a 24 hour span right I, I i can only show you like a video that lasts 10 to 11 minutes so you're not necessarily going to see the exhaustion but i hope i gave you a sense of what's happening i just feel that my work time has been condensed and as my friend marlena puts it like your time to just lay up goes away <laughs> when you have a kid like a layup means like you know just posting up on your couch posted up in bed watching netflix doing you know just having me time that really really dwindles down to next to nothing and what's important about those times that you don't realize is those are the times you rejuvenate those are the times your creative ideas come or they start to percolate in your mind from watching other creative content just from consuming media things like that are really important to creatives and i don't have that anymore and often at the end of the day i just don't have it so i'm working to have it more I've been re-upping on my vitamins, drinking more water. I try to make sure I do get some sunlight so we go out to the park. And it's also great for me as well to get that sunlight because that vitamin D truly is important. It's important for my spirit. It's helpful for that. And it's also helpful for giving me the energy that I need to do the motherhood juggle. So I've been doing more of that. And that's what I'm focused on. And I'm really excited for the fall weather because it's just like the perfect weather. It's not too hot. I don't have to worry about trying to get him to the park by a certain time. So he doesn't like, you know, he's not in, in the park during 80 degree to 90 degree weather. So I'm really looking forward to this fall season. Now, in terms of how I plan to shift business wise, so a couple things. Now, I'm excited to get back into launching Podcast Moguls and accepting new students into the program. Podcast Moguls is my podcast accelerator where I teach emerging and aspiring podcasters how to launch and grow their own podcast into a successful hit podcast that can garner sponsorships, can launch their platform, launch their personal brand, and it really breaks down everything I've done to grow Side Hustle Pro to what it is now. So the first class will actually be today. As you're hearing this, Thursday, October 7th, we're having having a live class tonight is completely free. It's a training all about how to make podcasting your side hustle. So if you haven't already signed up for that, go over to podcastmoguls.com. There will be a replay, but you have to make sure that you are signed up at podcastmoguls.com to join the class. It will start at 7 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to go over how to launch, how to grow those downloads, and how to make yourself attractive for sponsors and brand opportunities. So that's one thing I'm excited to get back into because since I have started that program, just seeing 
the results that my students have, seeing them land their first major sponsor and the excitement as they come back into our private community and share what's going on like that reminds me every day that I need to be doing this. I need to be sharing like I there's a world of opportunity out here. And if you are not putting yourself out there, you won't get these opportunities. You won't get the opportunity to, you know, speak on a stage or speak on TV or share what you know with the world and partner with the brand to bring it to a larger community, to make that impact, to help people who need to hear from you. All of those things, like I I really believe that's part of my purpose of being on this earth is not only do I get to do it, but to show others how to do it as well. So I'm really happy that I'm able to carve out space to do that. So the next cohort will be opening up again tonight, October 7th. Um, I'll be letting you know more about actually joining the full program of Podcast Moguls. So the free training, you can come, you can walk away with that and start growing your podcast today. But then if you want to work with me even more intensively for the next eight weeks, I'll also share how you can do that as well. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsors. Now, the other day, I was talking to a Side Hustle Pro guest. We were wrapping up the episode, and she mentioned again just how difficult and stressful HR was for her as she's ramping up her new business. So I was like, girl, have you heard about Gusto? Are you using that? And she said she hadn't heard about it. And I was like, you have got to look into Gusto. And you guys too, let me tell you, if you have turned your side hustle into an official business, then you are probably starting to see that small business owners, we wear a lot of hats. And not all of these hats are fun. Let me tell you, let me keep it real with you. Not all of these hats are fun. Things like filing taxes and running payroll, they can be really, really daunting. But that is where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually easy for small businesses like ours. You have fast, simple payroll processing, benefits, and expert HR support all in one place. And Gusto automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, they make it easy to add on health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Those old school clunky payroll providers that you're probably used to, they were not built for the way modern businesses like ours are run, but Gusto is. So let Gusto wear one of the many hats in your business. Side Hustle Pro listeners, you can get three months free when you run your first payroll. Just try a demo. Head over to Gusto.com slash SHP. That's Gusto.com slash SHP for your free demo. Enjoy. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. The online learning community is offering Side Hustle Pro listeners a free trial of premium membership. Now, many of you already know that one of my biggest side hustle hacks is Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for years now. You've heard me talk about it. And that's because it's the truth. There are so many excellent classes on Skillshare on topics such as freelance and entrepreneurship, marketing, video, websites, basically everything you need for your side hustle and more. So my most recent class on Skillshare is this class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. And I found it helpful because It guided me through every stage of creating engaging content and then went into techniques for how to grow my YouTube channel. And it was taught by a YouTuber with over 13 million downloads, so I think he knows what he's talking about. (laughs) So Skillshare is where I go when I want to explore new skills, when I want to brush up on my old skills, when I want to develop new techniques, I go to Skillshare. And Skillshare has classes for every skill level. So you can take short lessons, you can squeeze it into your day, it's very easy. Plus, they also have a hands-on project to make sure that you practice and reinforce what you learn. So you've heard me rave about it. Now it's time to explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash hustle. Side Hustle Pro listeners, you will get one month free trial of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash hustle. Again, one more time, that is one month of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash hustle. With daycare on the horizon, I know that I'll have more time for myself during the day as well. So often what happens is by 10 a.m. I'm ramped up. You know, I wake up, I'm a little groggy. Then I get into my zone and I start doing work and then I'm like ready to do more. And it's 10 a.m. and it's, you know, it's time to switch over and, you know, um, 
finish up breakfast, clean up, and take him to the park and do all these things. And even if I do try to have my laptop out while I'm watching him, which I try not to do because not only is it dangerous because he's at the age now where he can climb and he's just getting into everything. So I turn away for a second, like he could, you know, be like doing anything. So I try not to divide my attention. So that's part of the reason why it's harder to get things done because multitasking isn't really a thing. And when you try to multitask, what happens is you're just not getting both things done well. So when I'm in mom mode, I'm in mom mode because if I try to be in mom mode and work mode, I am sending the wrong attachments. I'm forgetting things in emails. I'm even spelling my own name wrong in email. You know what I mean? Like, so when I'm in mom mode, I try to be in mom mode. And so I try to work around that. But with um, him getting ready to um, be enriched and engaged during the day by someone who is trained to do this, then I'll be able to have more time during the day to do work as well so I can do more. And I'm looking forward to being able to do more, to being able to implement some of the awesome ideas and things I have coming up and to be able to interview guests during the day. So the window for interviewing guests has been a little bit shortened. Um, So first I was throughout this year attempting to do, going back to my old after work side hustle hours. So when I started Side Hustle Pro, I would interview guests on Mondays and Tuesdays between 6 and 8 p.m. So I started going back to that, like Tuesdays and Wednesdays this time between 6 to 8 p.m. was my sweet spot. Now it was doable, but you know, sometimes I was tired and I hated that I felt that my brain was not always as clear and as sharp as I wanted it to be. Like, I know, I know that I'm still proud of those episodes and I still love chatting. And once we were chatting, like, you know, I immediately perk up and like, I'm there. But I just think about what it could be like if I'm truly able to have that daytime energy because that daytime energy for me, that is where it's at. So I'm looking forward to doing more interviews during the morning and afternoon time slots and also doing more projects during the morning and afternoon time slots. One thing I will note is uh, something um, Hubby and I are testing out, and we started this later in the year, is so because I am doing the bulk of the day Mondays through or it was like Monday through Friday, we started um, doing a switch off on Fridays, actually. So on Fridays, and this is why I'm recording this now on Friday. Um, see, I got that daytime energy. Uh, he will actually do. So I'll do the mornings on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so I get the bulk of the day to do my work, my recordings, you know, my my meetings with brands and my team and all of that and, and be fully focused. And we've already seen a difference in how that um, impacts my work, grows my work and all of that. And what I'm just planning to do is just continue to do what it takes to show up as my best self. So what that means is really being mindful of my technology usage at night so I can go to sleep. Like I literally have a pop-up alarm uh, at 1030 on my phone that like, it's like, stop using technology, turn off your phone, go to sleep. So at that point, I will switch over to an audio book, (laughs) which will put me right to sleep. And that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. And everything I'm doing, you guys, I want to caveat with, I just take things day by day. There's a meme that says, I'm just taking it one ghetto day at a time. And that is what I am doing. There are days when I am on my ish and, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm working now. I'm eating great. Boom, boom, boom. Bam, bam, bam. Getting a lot done. Water intake is great. And then there are days when I wake up and from the minute I wake up, I just know you you just have those days where you just know that today is going to be a struggle bus day. I didn't get enough work done. That was how yesterday was for me, actually. Um, 
I didn't get enough sleep. So that impacted my ability to concentrate and my energy levels. Even though I took my vitamins, I didn't have the energy to even prepare myself like a proper meal. So of course that continues to deplete my energy throughout the day. Then we had to, um, you know, take King for an appointment. So the day, you know, started later and I didn't get the same morning time. So those days happen. And I want y'all to know, like when I'm showing you a glimpse in my day, those days like that are too busy and I don't have enough energy to even record that. So a lot of times you're just seeing my days when I have energy. So don't get it twisted and don't beat yourself up and feel bad like, oh, look at Nikayla. She's working out. She's eating this. I just had the energy to record that day, please. Don't misunderstand me, okay? Do not beat yourself up. Give yourself grace. Do what you can. And just try to remember that people are showing up on Instagram on their best days. Not necessarily because they want you to be jealous. Although some people do that. Not necessarily because they want to portray a false reality. But because that's the day when they were in the headspace and the energy space to create content. Now, I have some advice that I'd like to leave you guys with my side hustling moms. I hope this is helpful. These are things that I wish I had known going into motherhood. Um, first and foremost, I feel that motherhood is great. Like motherhood, for me, I've always wanted to become a mom um, and I have much love and support for those who are continuing to try. And if you've been able to make it through this episode, thank you. Um you know, I just, my heart goes out to anyone who this is a tender and soft spot for. I'm praying for you and I'm hoping with all my heart that you get to experience this if this is something that you want and desire. And I will say that I love and have always wanted to be a mom. Now, nowadays society, um, it can be scary to think about motherhood and think about your dreams at the same time. It makes it seem like you have to sacrifice one or the other. And I admit going into this, I've always felt that, you know, I saw Issa Rae in her latest article with Self Magazine actually said this, like she, I, I don't know if she said she was looking forward to it or not, but she did say that like she's not ready yet because she's not ready to slow down. And that's real. Motherhood does slow you down. I've always kind of had that feeling as well. And I remember um, back around the time when I, we started talking about, you know, um, trying and, and, and getting started, I was thinking that like, man, like I need to, we need to go visit here and here first. Cause when we have kids, like we can't do that. And Moyo was like, what are you talking about? Like our life is not over when we have kids. And I'm like, Ooh, I guess I was kind of feeling like life is over <laughs> and it's not over. It just, it changes. So a party of three with a kid being three is way different than us just going on a, a trip, you know, a boo loving trip together. It is now a family trip. And if we want to go on a boo loving trip, we have to think about who are we going to leave him with that we trust that we, you know, will feel secure with and, and, if that is just the grandparents, then that means, you know, we got to schedule a trip to New York and then fly out of there. So it's a lot of logistics to think through. So for my side hustling moms who are not yet moms, or even if you are a mom, I would say the things I wish I knew and the things that you should consider are thinking about what child care will look like for you. If you are planning to take a maternity leave, what happens after maternity leave? If your company doesn't provide much leave, um, what happens after the small leave that you get? If you don't get any leave, what happens to you career-wise? What would you like to happen? What can you plan to happen? Um, start looking into child care centers. Start talking to your family who might be in-home providers that could be open to being an in-home provider. Start asking your village about nannies and babysitters who they trust because I really feel that word of mouth is a hundred times better than these um, websites for child care no matter how many background checks or what have you they have like it's just really hard to meet a stranger on the internet it's like doing a dating app and really finding a child care provider from one of these websites is like going on blind dates and you know how that 
is like if you've ever dated like it is not a fun process so that's another reason why it's been tabled for us because it's like I don't have time to go on multiple dates right now with my child you know and figure out if you're right for my child or if you are a crazy person like I'm just not willing to do that I don't have the mommy mental first time mom bandwidth for all of that so start thinking about that right now um be strategic about where you live um, I know sometimes we can't like control that based on where the career opportunities are, um, rent prices or, you know, housing prices, what have you. But if you can definitely think strategically, like, who can I live close to, <laughs> you know, in this in vein of child care choices? Who can I live close to? What would be helpful? Who in our village can I live close to? Or if I don't have a village, where do I think I'll be able to to um, create a village more easily, you know, if your village, you want your village to be us, us brown folk, then where can I go that I can build a village and start building that community of us? Um, if you're a member of any um, groups, whether it's a Greek organization or what have you, you know, go where, okay, maybe I can be more active and then I can continue to meet more families, like really start to think that through. So having a baby is not just, okay, um, you know, let's move into a bigger house or let's move into a bigger apartment. Um, and, you know, those are some of the things I was thinking about. Let's, um, let's get this, let's get that, let's put that on our registry. It is the after the postpartum care that needs to be thought through a little bit more, the um, postpartum child care that needs to be thought through and thinking through how you will carve out time for self. So if you have a partner talking through, okay, what does it look like for me to have more time for myself? So that's a conversation like that me and hubby had, like I said, and then we, and when I realized that, Hey, um, I can't get much done with this setup and Obviously, his job is important to us as well. And so we want him to be able to, to really perform there and, and be completely present there. But then also I need that my job is important to me. Like Sahas a Pro is not just a hobby. It's a full time job for me and it is my career and it's something I want to grow. So what that looks like is us having to divvy up the days and say, you know what? Some days I need the full day and, you know, uh, we got to swap. So that is what we started to do. And that was really helpful. And these those conversations are ongoing. Speaking of partner, figuring out how you're going to find time for you find time for us to spend time with each other. So this this is a whole nother podcast in and of itself. But one thing that has been helpful for us is um, early on, uh, Moyo was able to handle the bulk of, of sleep training. And, you know, I have to give him endless praise for that because I couldn't, I just couldn't do it like I hated seeing the baby cry and what have you in an earlier episode I talked about the fact that you know he had latching issues and that affected our nursing journey so although that is still kind of a tender spot for me I do realize the blessing in that is that his dad was able to spend more time with him bottle feeding than he typically would have and that um, because of that, our sleep training journey was different and he was able to start sleeping in his room around um, the six month mark. Now, he didn't always sleep through the night. <laughs> That was another journey. You know, there were, uh, what do they call them? Sleep regressions and times when he would wake up. And even recently he would wake up um, because he was um, having a little bit of reflux and things like that. So having a baby is a consistent journey of trial and error. Like, what's wrong? Let's go to the pediatrician, try to figure it out. But I will say that time for us came with prioritizing, teaching him how to sleep on his own making sure that, you know, we had our space and he had his space so that we can watch a movie at nighttime. We can, you know, finish watching the Snowfall series, which we just did, and we can take on a new series and have that us time because we don't get the outside date time like we used to. So we have to make that inside date time. So for you, that might look different. Maybe you you will co-sleep and you will share a room with your baby for longer, but you make sure that you get some a babysitter that you love and, and, and can rely on and you will make weekly or monthly date nights a priority for your relationship. Whatever it is, side hustle bombs, start to think about it now. Start to think it through. Don't just think about the registry like I did. Think about what life after baby will look like. And 
I'll end with this. I was listening to, I was chatting with um, some mom friends um, the other day. And my friend Christina said this. And shout out to, to you, Christina. You were talking about the fact that hard is the word people often use to describe motherhood. And until you've experienced it, that's just conceptual. Because hard is different to everybody. Everybody has a different level of understanding of what hard can be. Added on top of that, everyone will face a different hard. So for me, my hard was my breastfeeding journey and the fact that it didn't look like what I thought it would look like. It looked like exclusive pumping for me. That was devastating for me. That was very, very hard for me. And there were other areas that were hard as well, like being um, in isolation in terms of not having the familial support um, because of COVID when he was first born and not knowing what was safe and what was not. Also, having just moved and not having a chance to establish more of a village before we were on lockdown. So literally just not having that human connection and interaction that we needed. So hard will look different for everybody. And you might think you know what your heart is going to be going into it, but then life hits you with curveballs. So it's being open to knowing that and also knowing that no matter what it is, somebody else is experiencing it. You have to open yourself up to talking about it in order to find the support you need. So another thing that people like to throw out is like, in addition to asking for help, it's like get support, get the help you need. And that can be a very abstract concept as well. As you're going through things, you might not always know what kind of support or help you even need or want. Will getting a maid help me? Will, you know, hiring a doula at this stage help me? You know, you you might not even know what it is that will help you. So the first step is to start talking about it. Just even if you don't know if you're talking to the right person who doesn't get it, just start to put that out there into the world, into the atmosphere, into the universe. I'm a big believer in that being a first step. So talk about it. So I might not have shared it with you guys before because again, bandwidth, time to record, energy to record. But I definitely, um, you know, talk to girlfriends, talk to other moms. And that was helpful in finding my way back to a place where I felt more like Nikayla and where I can now going into Q4 2021 say to y'all that it's me season. So If y'all want to learn more about podcasting and having your own podcast in me season, make sure you're checking out our class tonight. It's over at podcastmoguls.com. I'll be talking about how to make podcasting your side hustle. And again, there will be a replay for that. So make sure you register at podcastmoguls.com. The replay is only within the first 24 hours of the class though. So make sure you're signed up. All right, guys. And with that, if this episode was helpful for you, and if you liked it, please share it with another side hustler that you know. Talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you'll receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.